Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. I'm going to probably end up making this a playlist. Um, armies of the Lord. Armies of the Lord. I think this is part four, but I'm not sure. Get your King James Bible and turn to 2 Kings chapter 18. You know, this is, this chapter and 2 Kings chapter 19 are one of the reasons why these demon nominational churches will tell you, oh, don't read the Old Testament. That's that's uh, for the you-know-whos. That's not for us. We're New Testament Christians. Because this blows their theology out of the water. If you're a naval person, you know what that means. So, You know, because they'll tell you that the uh, you-know-who over in the Middle East are all of Israel. But God told Abraham... His children would be like the sand of the sea or the stars in the sky. I don't know if you've ever been out in the desert, in the middle, the middle of the desert, uh, far away from civilization, and looked up in the sky. You know, they call it uh, the Milky Way because there are so many stars up there, it looks like milk. I mean, literally hundreds of thousands of them. I don't think anybody's ever counted the number of stars because I don't. I think it's impossible, but I don't know. Uh, when I was a uh, elementary school kid, fifth or sixth grade, I forget exactly. I was very interested in astronomy. Very interested, and uh, yeah. But uh, thing is. Are the, you know who's in the Middle East, a few million of them, you know, maybe 12 to 20 million? Is that like the sand on the seashore for multitude? No. God said that kings would come out of Abraham. Where are those kings today? He said he'd be the father of many nations. Where are these many nations? One little Antichrist nation over the Middle East is not many. Last I checked. So, and if you want to know where this many nations thing is, Genesis 17, verse 5. God speaking to Abram, Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. Now, that word nations is the same word as translated in other places as Gentiles. So, is Abraham going to be the father of many Gentiles? So, where's all these many nations? You know, uh, there were 12 tribes of Israel. So, yeah. All right, 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 1. Now remember, Israel and Judah split in the days of King Solomon's, I think it was his son. They split. They had different kings. Israel was to the north. Judah was to the south. Israel's capital was Samaria. Judah's capital was Jerusalem. And we're going to read about uh, what happened to northern, northern Israel here. Verse 1. All right, let's go. 2 Kings chapter 18 and verse 1. Now it came to pass in the third year of Hoshea, son of Elah, King of Israel, King of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, King of 
Judah began to reign. Wait a minute, but I was always told that Judah and Israel is the same thing. Well, you got a king of Israel and you got a king of Judah. Boy, you want to give your denomination, demon nominational pastor a heart attack, start asking questions about this. They can't answer you because their lies won't let them answer you. And I know because I've asked these questions in Bible studies that I was invited to. Oh, yeah, they're all the same. Uh, I don't think so. Different capitals, different kings. They've had wars against each other. They fought each other. That's like, you know, go to Atlanta and, and, and tell them they're the same as a New York Yankee. Uh, you can, you're going to get some tobacco juice spit in your eye and maybe a fist in your face. I don't know. Oh, and what's funny is the uh, carpetbaggers that uh, plunder the South after the Civil War, guess what they were? Yeah. General Ulysses S. Grant actually tried to protect the South from them. But uh, you don't hear about that. Never, yeah, you don't hear about that. All right, verse 2. Uh, all right, so Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign. And he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Abai, the daughter of Zechariah. Verse 3. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father did. He removed the high places. Uh, have you ever heard the song, uh, Stairway to Heaven? Yeah, they're trying to build a stairway to heaven. The high places. They would get on the top of hills and mountains or whatever. And, you know, it's funny... All the civilizations that have been basically destroyed or made into third world countries have pyramids. The Aztecs, the Mayas, the Incas, um, believe it or well, of course, Egypt. Uh, God does not say anything good about Egypt in the Bible that I know of. If anybody can show me anywhere in the Bible where God says anything good about Egypt, let me know. Because I don't think there's one verse in the Bible where the Lord says anything good about Egypt. Believe it or not, the largest pyramid in the world is located in China. It's in the desert. Uh, it was only discovered by airplane uh, during World War II. And uh, when the communists took over China, they wouldn't allow anybody to look at it, to examine it. Probably because they know their fathers, uh, the devils, uh, created, created it. So, yeah. High places. These pyramids were places of sacrifice. The Aztecs did human sacrifice to their god or gods. And uh, they did cannibalism. And guess what? The, guess where, when the Spaniards came to modern-day Mexico and put a stop to it, guess what? The capital of the Aztecs was, today is modern-day Mexico City. So those flooding our land from the southern border are probably descendants of the Aztecs who did human sacrifice, Satanism, and cannibalism. Yeah. But this good king of Judah, he said, I'm not going to have any of this stuff. He removed the high places and break the images and cut down the groves. 
uh, which is consider trees sacred. That's what Hollywood is all about. The holly was considered a, that's what they made magic wands out of. Yeah. And they would ride on a broom. Well, what was a broom made out of? It had a wooden handle, right? And uh, yeah, they would do their sacrifices underneath trees. So, he removed the high places and break the images and cut down the groves and break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it, and he called it Nehushtan, whatever that means. Verse 5. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. Sounds like he was one of the best kings of all time. For he clave to the Lord and departed not from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord was with him, and he prospered whithersoever he went forth, and he rebelled against the king of Assyria and served him not. He smote the Philistines even unto Gaza, 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 and the borders thereof from the tower of the watchman to the fenced city. And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hoshea, son of Elon, Elah, king of Israel, that Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, came up against Samaria and besieged it. Now, Samaria was the capital of northern Israel. And at the end of three years, they took it. Even in the sixth year of Hezekiah, that is the ninth year of Hoshea, king of Israel, Samaria was taken. And the king of Assyria did carry away Israel unto Assyria and put them in Hala and in Habor, by the river of Gozan, and in the cities of the Medes. Now the Medes were uh, later uh, with the the Medes and the Persians, which is the area around modern day Iran today. Uh, let's see, what were they called? I have to think about this a second. Oh, the Parthians. You can read about them in the book of Acts. Uh, okay, so the Assyrians took Israel into captivity and a part of Judah too. Took them into captivity. They never returned back to the land. At least Israel never did. And they took some of them Israel and put him in the land, cities of the Medes who were tied in with the Persians who are Iran today and were the Parthians back in the days of Rome. Parthians gave Rome a run for their money. Rome never conquered the Parthians. Oh, they defeated them in some battles. In some battles, the Parthians defeated the Romans. But, uh, you can read about them. You know, it's amazing how much of our history is absolutely deleted. So, I imagine some of the Medes were, Assyri uh, were Israel. But later, after the Assyrian Empire collapsed, uh, because the Babylon and the Babylonians conquered Assyria, and they conquered Judah and Jerusalem and took them into captivity for 70 years. And that's what the book of Daniel is all about. And we're going to probably look at Daniel in a little bit. Maybe the next uh, Bible study. I don't know. But the Babylonians collapsed. And it was the Medes and the Persians that allowed Judah to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild. And you can read about that under the books of Ezra and Nehemiah. So, 
you know, and if you've never read the entire Bible from cover to cover, you're doing yourself a real disservice. What can I tell you? All right. Um, verse 11. And the king of Assyria did carry away Israel unto Assyria and put them in Hala and in Hebor and by the river Gozan and in the cities of the Medes because they obeyed not. They obeyed not the voice of the Lord their God, but transgressed his covenant and all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded and would not hear them nor do them. Now in the 14th year of King Hezekiah did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, come up against all the fenced cities of Judah and took them. The Syrian Empire was very powerful. Not only did they take Israel, but they took a lot of other kingdoms too. And they went into Judah and took a lot of the cities of Judah. And Hezekiah, 14, and Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent to the king of Assyria to Lachish, saying, I have offended. Return from me. That which thou puttest on me will I bear. And the king of Assyria appointed unto Hezekiah, king of Judah, 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. Uh, from what I understand, I believe a talent was 70 pounds. I'm not sure. 30 times 70 pounds of gold. Boy, that's a lot of money. Whew. And Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasures of the king's house. At that time did Hezekiah cut off the gold from the doors of the temple of the Lord and from the pillars which Hezekiah, king of Judah, had overlain and gave it to the king of Assyria. And the king of Assyria, Assyria sent Tartan and Rabsaris and Rabshakeh from Lachish to King Hezekiah with a great host against Jerusalem. And they went up and came to Jerusalem. And when they were come up, they came and stood up by the conduit of the upper pool, which is in the highway of the Fuller's Field. And when they had called to the king, there came to them Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, which was over the household, and Shebna the scribe, and Joah the son of Asaph the recorder. And Rabshakim said unto them, Speak ye now to Hezekiah, thus saith the great king, the king of Assyria. What confidence is this wherein thou trustest? Thou sayest, but they are but vain words. I have counsel and strength for the war. Now on whom dost thou trust that thou rebellest against me? So the king of Assyria is challenging the king of Judah, Hezekiah. 21. Now behold, thou trustest upon the staff of this bruised reed, even upon Egypt, on which if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt unto all that trust on him. But, Listen to this carefully. Verse 22. But if ye say unto me, We trust in the Lord our God, is not that he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah hath taken away? See, the Satanism Hezekiah took away. Is not that he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah hath taken away? And hath said to Judah and Jerusalem, Ye shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem. Now therefore I pray thee, give pledges to my lord, the king of Assyria, and I will deliver thee two thousand horses, if thou be able on thy part to set riders upon them. How then wilt thou turn away the face of one captain of the least of my master's servants, and put thy trust on Egypt for chariots and for horsemen? Am I now come up without the Lord against this place to destroy it? The Lord has, uh, the Lord said to me, go up against this land and destroy it. Then said Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and Shebna and Joah, Joah unto Rabshakim, 
Speak, I pray thee, to thy servants in the Syrian language, for we understand it. And talk not to us in the Jews' language, in the ears of the people that are on the wall. So they don't like what's being said, and they're like, eh, we don't want our people to hear what's being said here. But Rab Shechem, the Assyrian, said unto them, Hath my master sent me to thy master and to thee to speak these words? Hath he not sent me to the men which sit on the wall, that ye may eat their own dung? Now, if you don't know what dung is, uh, when you do number two in the bathroom, that's what dung is. And drink their own piss with you? See, they're surrounded the city, and all the food in the country is not going to go into the city. So when the food runs out in the city, that's it. What are they going to eat? What are they going to drink? Verse 28. Then Reb Shechem stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language, and spake, saying, Hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus saith the king, let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you out of his hand. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, The Lord will surely deliver us, and this city shall not be delivered in the hand of the king of Assyria. Boy, this guy's uh, got a lot of nerve, huh? 31. Hearken not to Hezekiah, for thus saith the king of Assyria, Make an agreement with me by a present, and come out to me, and then eat ye every man of his own vine, and every one of his fig tree, and drink ye every one of the waters of his cistern, until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of corn and wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of oil, olive, and of honey, that ye may live and not die, and hearken not unto Hezekiah when he persuadeth you, saying, the Lord will deliver us. Listen to this carefully. 33. Hath any of the gods of the nations delivered at all his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods, gods of Hamath and of Arpad? Where are the gods, gods of Shepharvim, Hena and Iva? Have they delivered Samaria out of mine hand? Who are the who are they among all the gods of the countries that have delivered their country out of mine hand that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of mine hand? Ooh. See, he's challenging the Lord God of Israel, saying, Oh, you you guys are gonna trust in this guy, the, the Lord of heaven and earth? You think that's gonna stop the king of Assyria from destroying Jerusalem? Verse 36, But the people held their peace and answered him not a word, for the king's commandment was, saying, Answer him not. Then came Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, which was over the household, and Shebna, the scribe, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, to Hezekiah, with their clothes rent, ripped, and told him the words of Rab Shaka, the Assyrian. Verse, uh, 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 1. All right, 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 1. And it came to pass, when King Hezekiah heard it, that he rent his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of the Lord. And he sent Eliakim, which was over the household, and Shebna the scribe, and the elders of the priests, covered with sackcloth, to Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos. And yes, this is the prophet Isaiah who wrote the book of Isaiah. And Isaiah is a, a very important book, very important book. People don't, you know, almost no churches I've ever attended would even touch the book of Isaiah. And by the way, I did a playlist on Isaiah, an entire commentary on it. It is worth, Isaiah is worth reading. Believe me, it really is. So, 
Verse 3. And they said unto him, Thus saith Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble, and of rebuke and blasphemy. For the children are come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth. It may be that the Lord thy God will hear all the world words of Rabshakeh, whom the king of Assyria, his master, has sent to reproach, or insult, to reproach the living God, and will reprove the words which the Lord thy God hath heard. Wherefore, lift up thy prayer for the remnant that are left. you got to realize, Assyria had taken basically all of Judah except for Jerusalem. That's the only thing left. He carried them off into captivity. Jerusalem's all that's left. Now, God had promised King David he would always have a man to sit on the throne of his kingdom. And being at Christ is reckoned from the lineage of King David uh, for the first four, well, for thousands of years there, uh, you know, yeah. Verse 5. So the servants of he King Hezekiah came to Isaiah, and Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall ye say to your master, Thus saith the Lord, Be not afraid of the words which thou hast heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Ooh. You don't want to blaspheme the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Behold, I will send a blast upon him, and he shall hear a rumor, and shall return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. So Rab Shekah returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libna, for he had heard that he, had to, he was departed from Lachish. And when he heard say of Tir Haka, king of Ethiopia, behold, he has come to out to fight against thee, he sent messengers again unto Hezekiah, saying, Thus shall you speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Let not thy God, in whom thou trustest, deceive thee, saying, Jerusalem shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, thou hast heard what the kings of Assyria hath done to all lands. The kings of Assyria have done to all lands by destroying them utterly. And shalt thou be delivered? Have the gods of the nations delivered them, which my fathers have destroyed? As Gozan, and Hara, and Rezeph, and the children of Eden, which were in Telassar. Where is the king of Hamath, and the king of Arpad, and the king of the city of Shepharvaim, of Hena and Iva? And Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwellest between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. Thou hast made heaven and earth. Lord, bow down thine ear and hear. Open, Lord, thine eyes and see, and hear the words of Sennacherib, which hath sent him to reproach the living God. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations and their lands, and have cast their gods, plural, into the fire. For they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone, therefore they have destroyed them. Now therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the God, thou art the Lord God, even thou only. Will Hezekiah's petition be made and accepted and acted upon? Let's find out. All right, verse 20. Then Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent to Hezekiah, saying, 
Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, That which thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have heard. This is the word that the Lord hath spoken concerning him. The virgin, the daughter of Zion, hath despised thee, and laughed thee to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem hath shaken her head at thee. Whom hast thou reproached and blasphemed? And against whom hast thou exalted thy voice and lifted up thine eyes on high, even against the Holy One of Israel? You see, yes, the Assyrians had blasphemed the Lord, but the children of Judah and Jerusalem had done the same thing. They didn't keep they had blasphemed the Lord. I mean, they had high places. They had the groves. They made idols. And the Lord had taken them away. Israel and part of Judah part of, uh, in, to captivity as punishment and judgment against them. And the Lord's saying, yeah, the Assyrians blasphemed me, but so did you. Well, maybe not Hezekiah, but Judah as a whole. Whom hast thou reproached and blasphemed? And against whom hast thou exalted thy voice and lifted up thine eyes on high, even against the Holy One of Israel? Oh yeah, Isaiah is rebuking the people here. 23. By thy messengers thou hast reproached the Lord, and hast said, With the multitude of my chariots I am come up to the height of the mountains, to the sides of Lebanon, and will cut down the tall cedar trees thereof, and the choice fir trees thereof, and I will enter into the lodgings of his borders, into the forest of his carmel. I have digged and drunk strange waters, and with the sole of my feet have I dried up all the rivers of besieged places." Hast thou not heard long ago how I have done it, and of ancient times that I have formed it? Now have I brought it to pass that thou shouldest be to lay, to lay waste fenced cities into ruinous heaps. Therefore their inhabitants were of small power. They were dismayed and confounded. They were as the grass of the field, why the grass of the field? Because one day the grass is green, the next day it's brown, dried up and dead. They were as the grass of the field, and as the green herb, as the grass on the housetops, and as corn blasted before it be grown up. But I know thy abode, and thy going out, and thy coming in, and thy rage against me. Because thy rage against me, and thy tumult is come up into mine ears. Therefore, I will put my hook in thy nose and my bridle in thy lips, and I will turn thee back by the way by which thou camest. Uh, by the way, if you don't know what a bridle is, it's uh, what they put into a horse's mouth so that, and you could pull it to the right or to the left, and the horse's head would turn in that direction that you wanted the horse to travel in. Because if the horse's head is turned to the left, he's not going to travel right because he can't see clearly to the right. He's going to, the way his head is facing is the where the direction he's going to go. That's what a bridle is. 29. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall eat this year such thing things as grow of themselves, and in the second year that which springeth of the same, and in the third year sow ye and reap, and plant vineyards, and eat the fruits thereof. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall yet again take root downward and bear fruit upward. You ever heard the expression, um, somebody say, oh, well, I'm going to plant my roots here. Uh, means they're going to settle down and stay in a place. And what does it mean to bear fruit upward? It means good works. 31. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant, and they that escape out of Mount Zion, the zeal 
The zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, He shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shield, nor cast a bank against it. What do you mean casting a bank? Uh, have you ever heard of a bank of a river? Um, a bank was kind of like uh, not a place to store money. No, it's kind of like, I believe it's like a, um, you build a, a rolling wall with levels and you roll it up against the wall of a city and then you could climb up with a ladder to get to the top of the wall of the city. So... Verse 33, by the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into the city, saith the Lord. For I will defend this city to save it for mine own sake, and for my servant David's sake. So the Lord God is going to save the city for his servant David's sake. Verse 35, here's the punchline. And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord, an angel of the Lord, went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians an hundred, fourscore, and five thousand. Do you know how much that is? That's 185,000 troops. Now, if you want to know how large 185,000 men are, uh, now I'm talking about the army, uh, the U.S. Army. A battalion is approximately 800 to 1,000 soldiers. A brigade or regiment is between two to 5,000 soldiers. A division is about 10 to 15,000 soldiers. So 185,000 would be about 12 divisions. I mean, that is, that's a lot. A corps is like two divisions between 20 and 45,000 soldiers. A field army, I mean, you're talking a field army is a minimum of 50,000 soldiers plus. I mean, this is a, 185,000 soldiers. Oh boy, that's a huge. I mean, that's 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 a field army. So verse 35, and it came to pass that night that the angel Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians an hundred four score and five thousand, and when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. And the angel of the Lord, one angel, killed 185,000 soldiers. Whoa. I wonder what an army of angels could do. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. And it came to pass, as he was worshipping in the house of Nisroch, his god, that Ad. Ramalek and Sharezer, his sons, smote him with the sword. His own children killed him. And they escaped into the land of Armenia. And Esar, Esar Haddon, his son, reigned in his stead. Wow. All right. So uh, I guess this is, uh, yeah. Yeah. I guess we got to close out now. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen.